Hey everybody, welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is part of a very large uh, moot, massively open online textbook for the introduction to statistics. So welcome back if you've been following along. This particular presentation is going to focus on stem and leaf plots, which are also sometimes called stem plots. So we have one very large example that we're going to go through in this particular uh, video. And so let's get started. Let's suppose you want to create a stem and leaf plot, also called a stem plot, for uh, any kind of data set. There are several different uh, ways you can do this. There's a lot of different types of data out there. Sometimes data doesn't have decimals, sometimes it does. In this particular example, what I've taken is a data set that represents exam scores, obviously pretend exam scores for students, and I went ahead and kept the decimal values. Because when you're creating a stem and leaf plot, you generally want to think to yourself, what's my overall goal? And what kind of information am I looking for? Most of the time, a stem and leaf plot is used to discover the shape or the distribution of the data that you have. So in other words, what does the data look like? And it's a nice, uh, very fast method that you can actually do by hand or using Excel or any other quick application. But what's nice is you can do it by hand. And so you can get a quick look at your data set. Now in this particular case, before I got started, I took each of my data values and I converted those values over just by rounding them up to the nearest whole number. And I did that because what I'd like to know for the shape of this particular data is essentially how many students got a grade in the 90s, how many students got a grade in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and so on. In other words, how many A's, how many B's, how many C's, D's, F's, and below F. So because that's my goal, my application, I don't actually need the extra 0.4 or 0.8 here. And so I went ahead and rounded to get a data set to start with to create my stem and leaf plot. So the very first step when creating a stem and leaf plot is to determine what you want your stems to be, how you want to represent them. In the vast majority of cases, the stem is the very first value in each number in your data set. So if I look at all the different data I have here, and I know what this data is, I'm familiar with it, so I know that the smallest value in this data set uh, is 30 something. And let's see if I can find that one real quick. Here it is. So 34 is actually my minimum value in this data set. If you have a large data set or a data set that you're not super familiar with, to find the minimum value, you can put the data into Excel or any other program and just find the min for minimum. So my min value here is 34. I also want to know my max value. And my max value happens to be 95. That's the largest value I have in this particular data set. So my stems are going to, in this case, be between my smallest value. My smallest value is 34, so that starts with a 3. And my largest value, which is 95, that starts with a 9. Now, some people might immediately ask, would it be incorrect to go ahead and produce stems or put stems here for 0, 1, and 2? That is definitely not incorrect at all. Even though I don't have any values in my data set that are in the 20s or 10s or even below 10, there's nothing wrong with extending your stems to represent all possible values in a data set of this nature. I know that these are numerical grades that can range from 0 to 100. And so theoretically, my stems could go all the way from 0 to 10. In this case, I'm just keeping it smaller because I happen to know that I don't have any grades below 34, nor do I have any grades above 95. So again, one of the things to think about is when you're building these types of, of graphs or images to describe your data, you have some flexibility because you are describing your data, and that's the goal of this. Of course, if you're in a classroom and your teacher has certain requirements, by all means, follow the requirements of your class. Either way, it'll look exactly the same, which is nice. So again, what are the stems? The stems, in this case, are represented 
by whatever the very first number can possibly be in my data set. I know my data ranges from essentially 0 to 100, although I don't have quite that many values. So I know I have numbers that will start with a 3, numbers that will start with a 4 or a 5, and so on. And you might be thinking, well, why would you do that? The answer to the question is, the stem represents a category, or a class, or a method for grouping this data. The whole idea behind building a stem and leaf plot is to group your data so that you can take a better look at not only what the data is that you have, but the shape of how it's distributed. Just by looking at this resulting stem and leaf plot, I can see very quickly that most, uh, most people in the class passed. That's the first thing I could see. A very large percentage of the people got a grade somewhere between 60s and 80s. That's all this data. Even though my data is a little bit skewed, it actually has an interesting bell shape to it. More of my people did well, so it's not a perfect bell shape, which would be uh, having a peak maybe closer to five or six, but given that I'm expecting the majority of the class to pass or do well, it is pseudo bell shaped data. So these are some of the things that you can see when you build yourself a stem and leaf plot. So let's build this from start to finish. I know that my data is going to be grouped by the first number of all the possible data values I have. So I'm going to need a 3 for a stem, I'm going to need a 4, a 5, a 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now let's start with the 3. What I'm going to do now is go through this data set and find every single value that starts with a 3. In other words, in this case, all students that got in the 30s, uh, in the 30 percentile or 30 percentage on their exam. So they didn't do well, that's definitely a failing grade. Luckily, there's only one student in this data set that got a grade in the 30s. Specifically, they got a 34. So to represent this value in the stem plot, I take the number 4 and put it as one of the leaves. So the leaf portion is the second value in the number represented in this category. The stem is 3 and the leaf is 4. Now I would continue on with this process. I would look through the whole data set and try to find any other student who got a grade in the 30s. However, there aren't any. So now I'm done with the first part of this graph. The second group is anyone who got a grade in the 40s. So my stem is because it represents any grade in the 40s. 41 through 49 will all go in this category or grouping. So we start from the top and we start to look and see. Here's a 49, so that's definitely going to go into that group. The leaf that represents 49 is the 9. So there's the 4 from the 49 and there's the 9. So the 9 tells you that you had definitely a grade starting with a 4 and ending with a 9. So by this 9 being placed as a leaf, it tells you that the value 49 is in your data set somewhere. Now let's continue to explore, and now we find 46. So you'll notice that there's a 6 also placed as a leaf in the category of any student who got in the 40s. So because this data set has a 49 and a 46, we have a 49 and a 46. The leaves represent the remainder of the value, and the stem is represented by the first number. That's all we have as far as people who scored in the 40s. Notice that I put these numbers in order. Even though I found the 49 first and then the 46, I actually put the 6 before the 9. And that's because it's best and also best visually to order these. So I know now that there's a 46 in my data set, I know that there's a 49 in my data set, and that's it. There's only two people who got values in the 40s. Now I do the same thing for people who got scores in the 50s. So I'll start up at the top. Here's one of them. They're color-coded in purple. Somebody got a 56, 
So there's the 6 representing that 56. Somebody got a 50. Here's the 0 representing the 50. And then if I keep scrolling, somebody got a 51. Here's the 1 representing the 51. So in this data set, there are three grades in the 50s, a 56, a 50, and a 51. Each of those three grades are represented here. Here's the 50, here's the 51, here's the 56. Again, I put them in numerical order. And then I'll do the same thing essentially for all of the other grade categories. Everybody who got a grade in the 60s will be in this particular area. They're color coded in red. This person got a 61. We got a 65. We have another 65. And we have a 66. So the 61 was represented by this one. The first 65 is represented by the first 5. The second 65 is represented by the second 5. And the 66 is represented by this 6. So you might immediately ask, well, do I need both 5s here? Can I just use one 5 to say that 65 is in the data set? The answer is you definitely need both 5s. Because remember, what you're showing here is the number of people in this data set or the number of values in this data set in this range, starting with 6. Well, there's four of them. And I want to make sure I'm representing all four of them here. Otherwise, it's not going to show the proper shape. So because four people scored in the 60s, all four of them are represented here, even though two of them are the same. So whenever you have duplicates, they just go right in there, right in order. Well, I had several people score in the 70s. And they're all color-coded in blue. I've got a 78, a 73. I've got another 78. I've got a 77, a 79, 72, and 75. So I'm going to take all of these, put them in order, and list them here as their leaves. There's the 72, 73, 75. 77, both 78s, and the 79, all listed there. We'll do the same thing for people who scored in the 80s. We've got an 87, an 81, 82, and another 82. So here's all four of those grades with both of the 82s listed. And then finally, we do the same thing for people who scored in the 90s. We've got three of those. We've got a 91, a 94, and a 95. So here's the 1, the 4, and the 5. So what this does is it organizes your data into categories, but not only does it organize it into categories, it also shows you how many people scored in that category. And so what's nice about this is actually it's a physical measurement because you can see just visually that more people got in the 70s than got in the 60s. More people got in the 80s than got in the 40s. And you can look at the shape of your data or the shape of the distribution to get an idea of how your data is distributed. For example, if every single one of these categories had only three numbers in it, then the shape would be uniform. If a whole bunch of people were over here, but almost nobody over here. The data would be very skewed. So this is a great way to look at the distribution or shape of your data. In general, and to briefly review, your stem is determined by the very first value of your data. And the leaf is represented by all the remaining numbers. So if this number happened to be 7,843, the 7 would still be my stem, and all the other numbers would be one leaf. Well, thank you very much for joining me for this video. If you're looking for examples in Excel or other videos on introduction to statistics, check out mathandstatistics.com. Have a great day.